Hello everyone, Manthrall here, and welcome to the weekly update video. Now this week, it's another patch week, and I gotta turn down the music a little bit more, guys. I do apologize for that one. Uh, okay, that was a little noisier than I was anticipating. Well, I could have just done this, and that's much easier. Anyway, guys, <clears throat> sorry about that, but it is another patch week update. Well, yeah, patch week update. So, there is other stuff, though, to mention, such as War's Retreat, which is next... Should be next week, guys. That's actually fantastic news. Yes, that is next week on the 27th. Uh, but there is some changes already for that. Uh, there is more information you can find on the official YouTube page. Um, but as it stands right now... Uh, since there's not a whole lot for this video, just patch notes, I'll talk a little bit about Wars Retreat from the video that I've seen. So there's going to be a new type of currency that you get for killing bosses. The harder the boss, obviously, the more uh, currency you get. Uh, you get. So you got to keep that in mind. Yakamaru is considered to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest boss. So that is the one that will get you the most uh, that currency, which I believe is 100. Uh, something to keep in mind with that, there is going to be a shop in there, which part of that shop is going to be the some of the combat auras, such as Vampirism, Berserker, and stuff like that. So the reason why you can't currently get them with loyalty points is because they are going into that shop. So do keep that in mind. That is why that is the way it is. Unfortunately, um, because I know a lot of people, myself included, like using our loyalty points for that. And loyalty points are looking a lot less appealing when ores start going away. However, unless they made a changement to this, that you will be able to keep your aura. Uh, if you already have it unlocked, so there's no refund, but you should be able to keep your auras. So hopefully that has not changed. So, there is, uh, the main aspect of War's Retreat, though, is the portal. There is other unlocks you can get by having bonfires um, be more efficient, all the way from, I believe, normal, all the way up to Elder Logs. Um, there's bonfire in there. There is a, what is, a War Crystal in there, and that War Crystal you can actually recover both summoning and prayer points. Uh, there's an adrenaline crystal if you unlock it, which that adrenaline crystal actually is pretty good because it will allow you to charge your adrenaline right there. Now I know some people might think that's kind of silly, but the portals are right there. So you can actually just hop into that portal, assuming you have a boss kill and assuming you've attuned it, because you do have to have one kill and a boss to in order to attune it to that, but here are the portals that have follow, which are actually pretty cool. There's the Death Reap, well, there's the uh, Grim Reapers portal, which allows you to go to that portal, like your assignment. What? Oh yeah, your assignment, um, but only your assignment. So you can go into that, you can do your assignment, and then you can just leave. Well, keep going in. So you could actually charge up the Adrenaline Crystal and then go straight into your boss. Up next, we have two blank ones. Those are the ones that you can attune. Um, if you are um, or just a regular account, you, the charge is 100k until you get the reduction, which is 50k. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, if you are a max player, it is automatically only 50k, so no worries there. And then finally, you have the most recent uh, portal, which that means the most recent boss to have been released, which currently is the Shadow Reef, if I remember correctly, so you will be able to go to the Shadow Reef. And there is a training facility there if you really want to use it. I don't really see many people using that personally. Uh, but that, that's the stuff that I do know of. Now, here's actually the changes. 
So here's going to be some, and you see they agreed to that significant of the significant chunks of the content should have associated completionist cake requirements. With that in mind, Wars Retreat will now come with four new achievements: Aura, Aura, Aura. Unlock every aura in the Wars Retreat store, which that's not too bad because a good chunk of you guys who do bossing as is are already going to have that. Uh, relight my fire. Fully upgrade the campfire in Warriors Retreat. It's actually not that bad. Uh, it will take a decent amount of logs and other stuff, but it's not that bad. And it says to unlock the completion escapes, you will need to complete my last resort, which is unlock the Warriors Retreat teleport, a second boss portal, the Altar of War, which is the summoning prayer, and the adrenaline crystals. So that's actually something that. A lot of people are going to want to do anyway, but that means to be a completionist, you have to go back into the combat world. So that is something to be keep in mind. So, ores being available in game at midnight on January 26th. The following ores will be removed from Solomon's General Store and added to the rewards in Wars Retreat, and this is exclusive. This is Vampirism, Dark Magic, Berserker, Reckless, and Maniacal. You will keep any auras you've already purchased with loyalty points, and they will automatically count towards the Aura 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 achievement. So there we go. That is absolutely fantastic. And they said there's no uh, refund the loyalty points spent on these auras. Um, me personally, that makes sense, and I'm perfectly fine with that, because we basically had access to this content before Wars Retreat did. So that's something that I actually trying to keep in mind. Extra Reaper points. So it says this one isn't really a change, but rather an addition. From launch of Wars Retreat, January 27th until February 10th, they will apply 50% extra Reaper points to all completed Reaper assignments. That's pretty dang good. <clears throat> that's about it for now. There could be more changes until then, but do keep in mind that's for now. Twitch Prime, don't forget to get that. Uh, don't forget to link your accounts. Don't forget to get the Premier Club. I mean, there's going to be a, com a lot coming up. You got Wars Retreat, Archaeology, the Elder God Wars Dungeon, and there's a lot more coming. Like, if you guys see my Rufus video, there's a ton of content coming this year. That's even stuff that we know of. There's more stuff that's coming that we don't know of. Alright, Lootscape is still the ranch out of time. Or, well, yeah, well, land out of land out of time. Anachronia. Uh, 250 resources ran the base camp. 1 to 200 marks to drop from the basic drop table, which is the Prismatic Small Medium Fallen Star, Prismatic Small Medium Lance, Spirit Ruby Diamond, Advanced Balls Core, Spring Silverhawk Down, Medium Small Dungeoneering Token Box, Uncut Dragonstone, Large Small Medium or, yeah, Large Medium or Small Cash Bag. The chance space, if unowned, is a random skilling outfit outfit piece, either Nature's Balance or Lootscape. The live streams this week is Tuesday, 21st January, 1700 UTC, general Q&A, and Saturday, January 25th at 20 UTC, uh, Shawnee featured stream. <laughs> it's pretty cool to have Shawnee as a featured stream, because, you know, we all miss you, Shawnee. Alright, now for the patch notes this week. And it looks like we have a decent sized chunk. Combat. Intercept can now be refreshed on a target already affected by the spell. Uh, clue scrolls. Clues will now automatically go into the Chur's clue carrier if the player inventory is full. Uh, clue scroll NPCs will now remind you that you also need the original clue when handing in a puzzle. Uh, graphics. Um, as, as content creators rejoice. You can now get up close and personal to those absolute units and anachronia before they get camera shy and disappear. So it says you can now get up closer to an object before it'll fade away when out in free camera mode and cutscenes, which is actually very nice, especially you know for people like myself. Interface: fix an issue graying out ga uh, gather buttons in player-owned farms. Modernize the look to of the banking perk interface on legendary pets. Clan event notice board information drop downs now populate upon first selection. Fixed bug where the monster examined spell gave the wrong light points. 
total when dealing with certain modified versions of monsters. That's not good. The free cam option has been removed from the compass menu. Uh, they've added descriptive text to the following items to better explain their new teleport functions. The Arc Journal, the Manifest Journal, and the Globe Trotter Arm Guards. Mobile. Fix Stronghold of Security Interface Dialog Window Overlap on Mobile. Resolved a problem with ordering of option, options when long pressing on the summoning globe from the mobile HUD. Uh, they've added extra options for the world ma uh, map top level interface into some others. Open world select moved onto home teleport menu, free cam removed as unavailable on mobile. Skybox and filters moved into mini map toggle menu. Skilling. Demons, uh, Cluster Slayer the Salamence now count, counts imps as demons. I know some of you might think that's kind of silly, but if you're going for the imp champion, that would be actually perfect. <clears throat> Fix an issue stopping death from allowing players to reroll uh, Reaper tasks. Can now continue to pick Phoenix Feathers with the skill key perk active whilst having a noted feather and no remaining free inventory slots. <clears throat> and other can no longer equip broken Cinderbane gloves from the bank. Uh, used Cinderbane gloves will now drop in PvP. The mushroom patch in Chernin Isef door uh, now takes players to the correct skill guide location. And that's actually it for this up uh, this week's updates and patch notes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe for more, and until next time, later guys.